Hey folks, Quilly Dean here, and welcome to Let's Talk About the Civilization Beyond Earth Fall Update. First patch for Beyond Earth is finally released, and we're going to go through the list of things and talk about how it affects you. Certainly lots of really positive changes to both the user interface and also the balance of the game. I do think that there's still a few things missing, but you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, balance changes, wonders and buildings, hall and chamber, I guess this is a nerf, less science in exchange for having some energy instead. Not really uh, a massive thing one way or another. This is pretty significant. Um, the ability to buy mind stems with energy would let you really rush out of victory quite quickly as harmony and i think this is going to probably bring it back to a pace that makes it a little bit more reasonable with the other victory types i still think that um the uh the mind flower victory type might be one of the easier ones or less micromanagey ones to do because you don't have to worry about you know placing a bunch of colonists and protecting those sites or even worse just spending tons and tons of units sending them through a gate depending on you know if you're going purity or supremacy so um i think this is probably an important change any diplo item can be traded in exchange for a peace treaty i'm not sure what wasn't tradable before and what would be tradable now, but there it is. This is an important change, I think. Uh, in Civilization V, you can only get a lump sum of gold if you had a friendship agreement, and now in Beyond Earth, you can only get a lump sum of energy if you have a cooperation agreement, and I think that's much better because it was way too easy to um, do something like trade uh, some floatstone to someone for 200 energy and then instantly declare war. You got your 200 energy, they no longer have their floatstone, and now you're going to have to have a cooperation agreement, which means if you declare war, you're going to get a massive... Um, um, uh, diplomatic penalty from breaking these kind of agreements, and that's probably much better. <clears throat> um, water trade routes no no longer require any increased yield. So clearly, the uh, trade routes in general are going to be nerfed here, and they were very powerful. There's no doubt about that. Uh, although one of the complaints that people had about trade routes was that um, they required a lot of micromanagement, and some people have may have argued that it would have been better if there were half as many trade routes but each trade route sort of stayed at the same power level. Um, the Fraxis people have decided to go the other way, where there's just as many trade routes, basically, but now you get less stuff. That's what these two changes do here. Also, you can't buy uh, trade depots with energy, which I guess prevents sort of a, more of an energy kind of snowballing thing with trade, uh, which I guess is okay. <clears throat> But overall, this is not necessarily the route I might have gone. Uh, they did, and that'll be later on, the, the quest for the auto plants that gives plus one trade routes no longer does that. So you will have fewer trade routes overall. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure this is the, the direction I would have gone in. The Somewhere in here, we'll see that um, there will be, by default, uh, your existing trade route will be at the top of the list. However, there's still no way to sort trade routes based on you know highest energy, highest gold, anything like that, which to me... That seems like kind of a shortfall. Um, it, you know, it was easy. Within like a week of the game coming out, someone had created a mod, basically, that reordered the trade routes and gave you a pull-down menu that let you sort by anything you wanted. And I don't know why that wouldn't be included in the base game. So I'm really disappointed about that. Um, the interface change seems like a no-brainer, and I have no idea why they wouldn't have done that. And then these trade balance changes <clears throat> are probably not the way I would have done it. So, uh, But there we have it. Aliens clearing a friendly alien nest now removes the Xenomass resource on player stockpile. That seems like an important bug fix. Adjust passive recovery rate for alien opinion to be slower to permit easier aggression ex escalation. I think that's good because right now you could sort of beat up on aliens quite a bit. And uh, it was pretty hard to actually get them to be properly aggroed. And I don't mind seeing that go up a little bit. Uh, established network now has zero difficulty, produces zero intrigue. Um, I, I didn't realize there was an exploit for it. I guess you would have recalled your agent and then put your agent back in the site, which would have allowed you to establish a network again. And establish network was really short. So I guess it would have let you put up your intrigue quite quickly. Um, so I guess that's an important fix. It kind of sucks that that exploit was kind of um, available, though, because I quite liked being able to build an, an established network quite quickly to get a little bit of intrigue and then, you know, just do it the one time. I wasn't abusing it. Uh, health balance changes. So there's a lot of more scaling effects. I don't think anything's were scaling before. I think what was happening is um, it was just a fixed sort of breakpoints. Um, and so now you're going to get a lot more effect, I think, from 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 negative health, which I, I think is quite good. And also scaling uh, on the positive side. I think this is going to feel better because as it is now, the difference between, say, two health and eight health was nothing. There was no difference whatsoever. I guess there still isn't because you still have to get above, uh, well, from two to eight, I guess there is. As soon as you get above five, and you start getting your production bonuses, where it used to be you had to get up to 10 before anything happened. So this is going to just feel better, because every point is actually going to matter, um, except for the 1 to 5.
Um, virtues. So eudaimonia, the uh, top tier prosperity virtue, which gave 25% less unhealthiness, is now nerfed to 15%. It was a pretty significant uh, boost to healthiness. I'm not sure that the nerf was truly required early on. It felt like this was pretty strong. Um, but on further playthroughs, uh, the other virtue trees start to seem a lot more appealing. Um, so we'll see. I guess it's still it's still a good pick, and I guess it's fine. Uh, learning centers provide plus one science for academies instead of plus two. Um, I never really took advantage of this, so I don't know how powerful it would have been, but I guess it's a lot more science, so maybe it would have been pretty brutal. This is a really important one. The sponsors have been tweaked here. Well, not just the sponsors, but a few things in the game setup. Um, <clears throat> and basically what they've done is they've correctly identified the um, the sponsors that seem the weakest and the most overpowered and brought them a little bit more in line. Uh, I really kind of like this tweak to the Slavic Federation. Uh, their orbital units last a lot longer now, 50% longer instead of only 20% longer. And they lose their free technology from the first launch. But honestly, this is fine. This free tech, you got your first satellite so early, especially since half the time you ended up popping it from a goodie hut anyway. Um, but the free technology you got was generally a very early technology and <clears throat> didn't necessarily represent that many beakers saved overall. I still like it. I still might I like to keep it. But I think this change where, A, the orbital units last longer, and B, you get more petroleum resources, which was usually your limiting factor in how many satellites you could launch. Well, now you get 50% more. So the Slavic Federation now really become the federation or the, the sponsor of, I'm going to spam a lot of satellites. So um, I'm not convinced that this is still a strong setup. I don't think it's strong, but it's thematically strong. So uh, I, I might expect some more tweaks later on. We'll see. Maybe maybe having 50% more petroleum is going to be worthwhile. The, um, the bear ability. This is, I guess, the, uh, the African Union. <clears throat> They had this ability to start off with, just the 10% growth when healthy, and I did believe that this was, it sounded good, but in practice was pretty weak. Having all cities start with the old earth relic is really, really nice, especially when you consider the fact that aristocrats and artists have been nerfed. So, um... All of a sudden, the African Union have a really, really, really enticing start just because they have the free old Earth relic. Very nice. Um, so you get a little bit more culture a little bit faster, but it also saves you X number of hammers in every single city you ever put down, which is a beautiful thing. Uh, this is Brasilia. They used to have 10% bonus strength for uh, melee damage. Now they also get a built-in plus 5 heal only when fortified. Uh, as opposed to every turn automatically. Uh, but again, this was, I think, a necessary buff. 10% strength is nice, but it didn't compete with some of the other abilities. Um, and then the uh, Franco-Iberian ability got a nerf. Um, it still reads very similarly. It's one free... Uh, wait. Oh, never mind. I, I It is a big change. I thought it was still one free tech, but it was changed through this here. So now instead of getting one free tech every 10 virtues, you get a free virtue every 10 virtues. And it says earned normally through culture. I think that um, this means if you ever build, um, if you get any sort of quest or wonders or anything like that that gives you a free uh, virtue, it won't count towards these 10 virtues. So um, <clears throat> definitely nerf because the Oile Du ability really came out to about two free techs over the course of the entire game. And um, because of their timing, they could become really valuable techs that you got for free. And so now just getting an extra free virtue, honestly, this might be... This might not be strong enough, uh, and especially since it's earned normally through culture as opposed to any means, it's entirely possible that you will only ever get one free virtue over the course of the game, uh, in which case this is not a strong enough ability. We'll see how it goes exactly. So the other start, the Aristocrats and Artists, which both used to give uh, a health bonus, used to be what, plus two culture and plus one health and plus three energy and plus one health, I think it is. So now they're health, they lost their health bonus, but they get a little bit more culture and a little bit more energy. Um... I think that Aristocrats was patently worse than Artists before, and I think it's even more so. I think Artists are still pretty tempting, Culture is still pretty nice to have, and uh, I think it's good that they got rid of their health bonus because these two options were heads and tails above the other picks just because health was so very important. And now having to choose between plus two food, plus two production, plus two science, plus three culture, plus four energy. Those are actually some pretty interesting choices, I think, and um, it's probably better for game balance overall. This is a really interesting change over here. So they've swapped the position of the clear miasma worker ability and the miasmic repulsor um, satellite ability. So in practice, at least in my games, I often didn't pick up clear miasma. 
um, or or I didn't felt inconvenience because clear miasma was on a leaf tech that gave you harmony virtue or harmony uh, affinity and so if I was playing purity or supremacy it felt like I was kind of having to go out of my way for one worker ability and so now you get it for free at ecology which is quite nice but it does bear the question of Will miasmic repulsors ever be used? Um, I don't think it'll ever be used for clearing miasma within your own borders, unless you have a big honking chunk of it, in which case it might be worthwhile. Luckily, these things are relatively cheap and don't require any special resources to build. Um, it does give you the... Uh, you might still build these if you're planning on invading an enemy territory, where you can't use your workers to clear out the miasma, and you want, might want to clear out the miasma ahead of time just so you can get your units there safely. Um, I suspect in the end that Miasmic Repulsors will, will sort of go and die. We'll see how it goes. This is a huge buff to, well, everyone. In fact, it might end up being a bigger buff to the AI. That might be one of the things the AI just didn't go down that branch as often, and so uh, they were left with really inefficient Miasma removal. I don't know. Um, I like it because it's very convenient. I like things that make the game slightly more convenient, and that is. So, there we go. Um... A couple other tweaks, array science bonus unlocks on astrodynamics instead of orbital automation, sure, whatever, planet carver, uh, so um, I think, unless I'm wrong, and I don't have my tech web up, I think that astrodynamics was the branch tech and orbital automation was the leaf tech, so they flip these around, I'm not sure actually, um, I wonder if I can do a quick uh, Google on my second monitor here, um, Okay, orbital on automation is indeed a leaf tech. So, and I'm just trying to zoom into the picture here to figure out. Yeah, and Astrodynamics is the attached leaf tech. So, uh, or branch tech. So now planet carvers are slightly slower to get, whereas the um, array science bonus is slightly easier to get. There we go. And the Markov Eclipse has been moved to Transcendental Math, and I think this is a really good change, because right now, uh, unless I'm wrong, Transcendental Math, the only thing it gave you is the ability to build the... Um, the, the equation wonder for the contact victory type. So now there starts to be a bit more of a purpose to going down that branch, or there's at least a bonus. If you're going for the contact victory, um, then you'll probably get your, um, you'll get the chance to build the Markov Eclipse wonder if you want. Stations now spawn a little bit later and have more space between them and between other cities, um, just to stop them from clustering up quite as much. And the slight delay on the station uh, start turn might give you a little bit more of an opportunity to uh, rush out a a colonist somewhere that you want to settle um, before a station gets in the way. It's still hard. 30 turns is still not a really, really long time to really get a settler out there, but I think the spacing is going to be better overall. Um, the affinity perk, uh, level 1 perk, has been uh, changed. This old ability, the alien opinion recovers twice as quickly, um, sort of did work with Harmony because you might find yourself expanding into areas where there were a lot of aliens, so having it recover twice as fast uh, might have been a good idea. Um, but I think I like this change. I think it's thematically cooler to have the Explorer become immune to Miasma as soon as you get level 1 Harmony. I think that's actually a very handy ability, allow your Explorer to move around quite a bit. I also agree with this change. Um, it was that aliens cannot attack Explorers, and obviously I was a huge fan of that because it meant a lot less micromanagement for your Explorer to you know navigate through alien territory, but it also meant that your Explorer was a perfect escort for any colonists, and it was kind of abusey and weird, and very, very, very strong wrong. As it is now, first of all, uh, we haven't seen it yet, but the Explorer unit has been buffed, so instead of having a strength of 3, it had a strength, has a strength of 6, which I think is critical. I think the strength 3 Explorer unit was just stupid to have it so low. 6 still makes it very squishy, but a little bit less, I'm instantly going to collapse if anyone looks at me the wrong way. So already your Explorer is tougher, and then with Purity, you get double combat strength when defending any defense, not just against aliens. And now all of a sudden, your explorer can't be picked off by neither aliens nor a randomly hostile AI uh, quite as easily. And anyway, I'm a, a big fan of that change. I think it's actually a really good idea, uh, even though I'm really going to miss this ability. Quest, okay, this is another really, really important one. Um, it used to be possible... Uh, so there's two things with Affinity. One is um, they're sort of nerfing some of the early Affinity units, and B one and then B. Um, and the two is that the uh, quest rewards that gave you affinity points um, will trigger a little bit less quickly or won't trigger. It's statistically less likely to trigger as quickly. And also it guarantees that everyone will get affinity point based quests at the same time, uh, because it was definitely possible for someone to get a quest that granted an affinity level, whereas other people didn't. And then you would quickly get to your, your first tier um, 
uh, affinity unit when you get to your affinity level four, and you'd use that to basically just run over everyone. And um, that it wasn't good, and it happened all the time. You would see it constantly. So now uh, it comes in a little slower, and everyone will get the affinity quest available to them at the same time. Um, they, uh, I mean, it doesn't mean you can complete it right away, but at least it becomes an option right away, which is really good. And then furthermore, we'll see that the, the, the affinity units have been nerfed a little as well. And another big change here, the auto plant building, which one of the quest rewards was plus one trade route, which you would always, always take, has now been replaced with bonus production. So you'll have a choice of energy or production from auto plants. It also means there's going to be fewer trade units to micromanage, uh, which is probably a good thematic thing overall. Obviously a big nerf to the auto plant building, but probably a good idea for the game. So yes, here we see explorers have double their old combat strength, which is nice. Um, see units now follow the same rules for ranged combat defense as all units. They use the highest of their combat values, ranged combat or melee combat, when calculating defense. Ah, okay. So, I suspect what was happening here was that your C units, one of the reasons they were so squishy is when they got bombarded, they probably used their melee defense to defend against the bombard, which is, of course, much, much, much lower. That would explain why the C units might have felt so squishy. I, didn't, I don't know if I realized that. And they definitely did. I mean, whoever got the first shot in a C combat, you mostly just, like, did 100%, you know, insta-kill damage to other naval units, so that's better. Um, this is also probably smart. The combat rover can no longer fortify and no longer receive defense bonus from the train it's on, which brings it more in line to the behavior of how um, fast-moving cavalry units worked in Civ Five, for example. Um, it, it Usually you weren't using your combat rovers in defensive situations like that anyway because they had slightly lower combat strength, but now it makes it a little bit more explicit. So you no longer get defensive bonuses from, say, sitting on a hill, nor can you fortify with uh, the fast-moving units. I think that's okay. So, raising the secondary level requirement for the hybrid upgrades of affinity units. Um, that's interesting. I, I don't know if... Um, if that was needed or not, I mean, it definitely made it a little easier because of the way that the affinities work and random quests work and things like that. So what, what does this mean? This unit, say this Xenoswarm, would normally take something like 12 Harmony, or you could get it with 10 Harmony plus 2 of either Purity or Supremacy. Um, and that extra 2 of Supremacy or Purity was a lot easier to get than the, you know, level 11 and level 12 of your, your primary affinity. So this does make it a little harder to sort of sneak in that um, that special affinity level um, of the hybrid ones, which is what, your rank 3 or something? Or maybe, it's, I guess it's your upgraded rank 1, I mean, whatever it was. So now those are all um, slightly delayed, and it's probably okay. I like the fact that they're lowering the strategic resource costs for the affinity units um, and making them completely equal, so... Um, or equaler, I suppose, so a bit of a drop, especially these ones that cost seven, dropping them down to five will be a little bit more workable. Um, I didn't realize, I think, that the Roctopus needed a little bit of Floatstone, that's kind of interesting. I still wish that um, they were a little bit more consistent about things like, you know how the, the first purity unit needs titanium instead of Floatstone? It'd be cool if there was a little bit more of that across the tree, because it feels weird that purity needs less Floatstone, but more titanium. Um, Whereas no one else has any sort of consideration for that. You could easily do something like that with the uh, the geo the geothermals and um, what's the other one? Oh, and like oil, right? You could easily figure out something like that. Anyway, um, production cost of upgraded combat rovers and missile rovers. So now they're going to cost more, which, I mean, uh, the AI spams combat rovers. So I actually don't mind that their cost is being increased. I don't tend to build them much myself. Maybe I should. I don't know. But nerfing the AI there a little bit is probably nice because they're really crazy about those things also is going to help that the combat rovers don't get defensive bonuses so i don't know that might help us against certain ai situations where they just spam that and then kind of run you over because they have fewer um upkeep costs for example missile rovers being a little bit more expensive i guess is fine i mean it's not much of a difference so who really cares and the combat rovers been further nor nerfed in that it um Actually, it's just to put one change here third level slightly less damage over there um and nerfing the, fir the a lot of the units, especially these first tier ones. It says Xenoswarm, but I was going to say, yeah, battle suits. So your first rank unit was going to be somewhere between, well, I didn't realize they varied so much. Here's 34 versus 40. Well, now it's going to be something like 22 versus 24. Much, much weaker at first tier. And I think that's probably good because it made such a difference. You're, 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 the whole thing in this game was rush to tier 4 affinity, 
build your first affinity unit and just crush everyone. And the fact that that's no longer the case, I think is actually going to be very, very good for the game. Um, the only way to like make the game not a joke it was to delay your tier four units because otherwise you just ran over everyone. So now um, the 22 or 24 strength, whatever, is not going to be that much more above the uh, the soldier unit. You can see here the tier two rover is an 18, so it's not you know that far out of whack as stuff. Um, slight AI changes for the one more turn button. Um, Warmonger threat per city acquisition is now capped. That's interesting. And I like the fact that the Warmonger calculation scales if you didn't start the war. If you were on the defense, you can take cities from your attacker with getting a little bit less Warmonger penalty. Um, tweaks and bonuses. Presumably, it's going to be a little bit... I'm hoping the AI is just a little bit smarter, a little bit stronger. I mean... This is the, the AI smarter bit. This is the AI just gets more cheaty bonuses bits, which is fine at higher levels, you know? Let the AI cheat, that's okay. Um, that's interesting. So I guess they're going to be monitoring what affinities and techs and units people use a little bit more um, trans uh, automatically. Hopefully it is properly anonymous. We'll see how it goes. Graphic changes, something, something. Apparently they fixed a bug with 144 hertz monitors as well. Um... Uh, previous trade routes appear in our own category at the top of the trade route chooser, which is handy, but I still want to be able to sort based on um, amount of gold and science. Uh, because frankly, my, my normal thing will just be to click the thing at the top of the list, uh, assuming, you know, generates the most science or something like that. I don't know. Uh, more tooltips is good. Longer city names, things like that. Oh yeah, the, the, the last item completed is really good. I had to use a mod to show me that. It was, that was such a huge fail that it didn't ship with that. A um, few little tweaks. This is a nice one. Um, having escape leave orbital mode because you launch a satellite, it auto pops you into orbital mode. And then by default, I was hitting like escape all the time to try to pop out of the orbital mode and I just get the menu. So instead I had to go down to the toolbar and click the, uh, the satellite button or remember what the hotkey was, which never had it. Um, warning. Okay. That's useful. Color underlays to buildings and wonder types. So one of the complaints in the game was that it was hard to distinguish between wonders and buildings on the tech tree. Um, buildings had a round border and wonders had like, okay, they were kind of technically a gear background, but it was kind of subtle and hard to see that you couldn't tell at a glance the difference between buildings and wonders. And there's a great mod that added coloring to the map to clearly distinguish between units, buildings, wonders, and then just like passive perks, like, oh, your farm's produce plus one food or something like that. And it was great. This underlay... Again, I don't know why they're not just stealing more ideas kind of wholesale from the modern community. The underlay is fine. It does help you tell between buildings and wonders. I think buildings have kind of a whitish underlay and wonders have a bit of a golden one, like basically a glow around them. Um, but uh, to me, it's not like a strong enough dis dif um, differentiation. I, I would have gone for like just completely different vivid colors. Same thing with the trade route thing. I don't know why the trade routes aren't sortable by different stuff. It was an easy little change for the modern community to make. Why can't the actual game developers do it? I don't know. Uh, advisors, who cares? Third party wars and Diplo overview um, is very good. So we can actually see who's at war with what because you actually had no real way of doing that other than some weird going through the diplomacy screen and checking the, you know, declare war on, declare peace on kind of screens. Um, multiplayer changes. Stability is good. We've certainly run into a few uh, multiplayer stability problems, so hopefully that'll uh, fix things. Um, some bug fixes where I don't know how many of these were totally... The empty trade requests, I would get those all the time, so it's nice that that's gone. I mean, not game-breaking, but kind of annoying. Um, some quest bugs. Certainly a lot of those have been reported, so it's nice to see that that's going on there. Um, friendly aliens no longer blockade cities. I mean, I never really did the friendly alien thing, so I guess I hadn't really noticed that. And uh, many additional bugs and crashes. So, I mean, that's all good. That's all good. Um, there's certainly a lot of good changes to the game. Uh, I think I, I wasn't really thinking about a lot of these unit balances, uh, both the costs and also their strength. So the units are stronger, but you can spam them out more. Or they're, they're weaker, but you can spam out a few more of them. And um, that's probably okay, because I think that combat was just so fast and so sudden. Again, with those rank four units, you'd kill a bunch of units and potentially like one or two shot a city as well. Um, even with some defenses. So I think those are good changes. I think this is a great change. I think it's really going to be nice to make every health point um, kind of feel good. Um, still still missing a few things for me. I'm, I'm still a little underwhelmed. I feel like this is the sort of patch that should have been out a couple weeks after game release. And at this point, we should be having yet another patch with more changes. So I'm not impressed by the speed of release, but 
it's obviously a, a good good step in the right direction. So um, this is the fall patch. I guess we have to wait a few more months before we get a winter patch. Um, I guess is just the way that they go. Although it's the fall patch, it is December. Yeah, I realize it's not winter until December twenty first, but this is almost effectively a winter patch, and it's just it seems a little weird to me that it took so long to do this. I mean, balance changes, I realize you can't do them willy-nilly. Um, a, a balance change that seems maybe obvious to some people, as it turns out, when you play, uh, has really bad um, unintended consequences, but I don't know, man. I don't know. And certainly the UI changes, I think, should really... Uh, I still don't like the fact that I can't sort trade routes by anything useful in the base game. It's very disappointing. But uh, other than that, I'm looking forward to playing the patch, and I will see you in game. Bye-bye.